if you're interested in the minutiae of evolution, then everything is actually unique. That's certainly the case. But if you're looking at the grand scheme of things, you find that again and again and again, unsurprisingly, in part because of physical constraints, the same solution has re-emerged. You mentioned there the, the convergent nature uh, of, of the evolutionary process, right? Uh, so yeah, you see powered flight evolve multiple times. Now, uh, does that suggest to you, so you could argue, well, it's just, uh, you know, over a course of four billion years, just by chance, you're going to get certain things that, that, that crop up multiple times. Um, and there's nothing really to see here in terms of convergence. It's just a sort of chance, you know, events that, that, that have occurred. And anytime you run a, a complex process for a real long period of time, you might see certain things repeat. Uh, but it seems like you, you're arguing more that there's sort of an underlying um, pattern that, that you might see um, in, in evolution where you say, yeah, this is, this is uh, predictable. Is that, is that sort of where, where you would fall? Uh, indeed it is. And it is, I think, particularly interesting if I might give the classic example of convergence. Uh, I think it's a legitimate one. And that's the similarity between our eye as a, a vertebrate and those are the octopus and the squid, which are distantly related to us. And anybody who's done first year of zoology will know that to the first approximation, these eyes are almost identical. But then when you look in the details, it turns out there are all sorts of subtle differences. But what is fascinating is that in each and every case, what appears to be an apparent disadvantage or advantage, for example, in the octopus, the retina is on the outmost part of the um, of the cells, whereas our retina, of course, is uh, buried underneath another layer of the cells because we derive it from the brain. But in that particular case, what appears to be actually a drawback and a disadvantage and rather sloppy design actually is solved in a truly brilliant way. And therefore, in the longer term, it really doesn't matter whether you've got the eye of an octopus or whether you've got the eye of a human. From the perspective of the eye, I'm not saying much about the brain yet, they will work in for all intents and purposes, in identical fashion. Yeah, and, and the reason that they would work in an identical fashion you, would be because um, they, they both have to do the same thing. That's why you're not going to have flying elephants, yeah. right? There's physical constraints that yeah. you're, you're not going to be able to generate enough lift to get something that large. You, 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 you talk about flying elephants. Well, I'll give you flying elephants if you want to, but unfortunately I've got to do a deal with you. We've got to have a planet which has got a much more thick atmosphere and if you go to Venus, for instance, the atmosphere on the surface is about equivalent in terms of pressure to a kilometer of seawater. You can certainly envisage Earth-like planets which have rather different atmospheres. And if indeed they were more viscous, effectively, if they were thicker, then something substantially larger in principle could fly. So, But again, we can play with the physics and those, again, will provide a series of parameters which will allow us to once again constrain in an apparently alien environment what something actually turns out to be on the same principles we find here on Earth.